just a few words to frame our workshop uh, and to get to know each other. Uh, we have uh, a few talks that will, will give a very nice introduction to the whole topic. But uh, in these slides, uh, I just wanted to make a very, very general commentary of what is uh, driving us and uh, why we are doing uh, what we are doing. So the reproducibility crisis. Maybe you've heard of it. Probably if you're here, you've heard of it. Uh, it was more or less kickstarted in 2005 by this very famous paper by John Ioannidis that uh, basically stated that the most published research findings are false. Our community, um, in my, my feeling was that my, our community felt relatively immune or uh, we kind of uh, continued for um, quite some time without being too concerned, probably because we were doing a lot of method development. It's a bit slight different kind of research than uh, what uh, the reproducibility crisis was really hitting. But uh, uh, it became apparent that uh, uh, problems with uh, uh, statistics uh, and uh, correction and publication bias uh, uh, were affecting us as well. And this is a, a very, very famous abstract from 2009 showing uh, uh, that uh, you can even find the activation in a dead fish. And this is definitely a reproducibility problem. Uh, something that I like to say is that uh, if you repeat a test long enough, uh, it uh, will eventually turn out to be true. And uh, this is what gets published. And this is also true in our, uh, in our field. Moreover, uh, reproducibility seems to have uh, a prob um, uh, seems to affect our life uh, as a scientist, uh, and uh, there is a question that uh, uh, mental health problems in scientists are also fueled by uh, fear and uh, problems of reproducibility. So um, this is uh, uh, what uh, motivated us. Uh, this is not. To to scare us, but uh, to uh, motivate to do better science. So in order to know each other, this is also the first time we are doing this workshop. Uh, I would like uh, everybody to participate in a couple of polls to understand what kind of audience we have and what kind of expectations we have. So this is the first poll. Uh, maybe Emma, uh, she has the ability of starting it. Ah, here it is. So just uh, share with us the, your experience with pre-registration. Let's give it a few seconds. Emma, you decide when to stop. So of course, uh, open or reproducible science has many aspects and um, most probably you've encountered them in your career, maybe all of them, maybe you're already uh, expert in all of them. Do we have some votes, Emma? Perfect. Do we see the results uh, or, or do we see, ah, fantastic. Okay. So it seems that uh, a lot of us have published uh, with open access journals and released uh, software hardware as open source, but uh, uh, we have uh, answers all over the board. Uh, it's nice to see that there are also some pre-registration experiences. I've never done it personally. <laughs> I've talked and heard a lot about them, but never had the occasion to do it. Okay. Uh, then uh, um, just a few words about why did we name this workshop MRI together. We have uh, really the strong conviction that science is better when it's shared. And uh, uh, if we are together and if we really share what we know and the way that we do things, uh, uh, we can achieve a better goal than just uh, being our own thing separately. And so we believe in sharing of results through unbiased publication, may they be positive or negative, sharing the methods and data with open source and open data. And most of all, we want to increase accessibility of science uh, by being inclusive, diverse and accessible. And these were the uh, driving uh, principles behind uh, our MRI Together workshop. And I hope that uh, you, will, uh, uh, you will feel that during the course of the workshop. 
So we now have, uh, um, these are just some numbers. So how many we are, these are just the people that decided to share these uh, statistics with us. This is the first edition of this workshop. It's spanning four time zones. Laura will tell you in a second uh, how that works. We have 12 sponsors. We are very grateful for them. We have uh, 15 posters, uh, 20 total sessions, uh, more than 32 countries. Again, these are only the countries that share the information with us. 123 between speakers and moderators and more than 600 registered attendees. So we are really happy to see these numbers and we're really happy to see all this colorful pie chart. So just uh, uh, another quick poll to uh, get to know each other, also to have an idea of what the audience today is. Uh, this will be about your geographical region and uh, your um, state stage in research. Yes, here it is. Unfortunately, we had to split the geographical regions into two. Uh, I hope it's not too confusing. <laughs> the polls did not allow to have uh, more than 10 uh, answers for the same question. Um, by the way, these regions are the uh, official UN classification of regions. Uh, we try to be as objective as, po as possible and also uh, providing these kind of answers. Okay, let's wait for another second. Um, so just uh, scroll through the options, your geographical region should be there. Emma again will decide when to stop when she has enough votes. We have 120 attendees so far. Okay, so we have a uh, Quite some people from Europe. I mean, it's uh, definitely logical that uh, uh, given the time zone and uh, a very nice mix of uh, career stages, but both uh, all trainee, mid career, and advanced. So, yeah, thank you all for joining. This is, uh, this is uh, fantastic. We'll have a few more slides, and uh, Laura will uh, tell you uh, a little bit about the structure of the workshop now. Okay, so because this is a new structure, we wanted just to give you an overview of how the next few days will go. Um, we realized that maybe some of the timetables on the website can be a little um, overwhelming. So we just wanna walk you through it. Again, our website is right here. You can go here, click on our timetable. Um, we identified again, four different time zones, the Caribbean, Atlantic, Indian and Pacific. So you will see one of these time zones always listed in the title session. If we look outside of the opening and closing sessions, the four sessions, A, B, C, D, will always have two components to it. Um, in this example for session A, which is all about data, we have session A1 and A2. In session A1, this will occur over two different time zones. In this example, it's the Indian and the Caribbean time zone, um, and these are 12 hours apart. Um, these are parallel sessions, meaning that sessions A1 and A2 are going to be happening at the same time. So the Indian sessions are again at the exact same time. However, um, there is a social break um, following three individual 20 minute talks. Um, on the social break, you can free, free, feel free to log in to our A10D platform. This is an opportunity to meet speakers um, or meet other participants in the workshop. And because these sessions are happening in parallel, you can also visit um, other people who might be in the session that you can't attend. Um, and then after the 15 minute social break, please come back to the Zoom events platform where you will have a 45 minute hands-on tutorial. This is meant to be interactive, um, meaning that everybody's videos will be available. You'll be able to talk with the speakers and the participants. Um, for a couple of these tutorials, some of the speakers have already um, written really nice GitHubs 
um, or, or provided us links for um, their presentations. And so you can access that versus the hyperlink, uh, which is linked to the talk title. So we have one last poll um, and we just really wanna know what are your expectations and what are you looking from um, from this workshop? So the first question, how did you hear about MRI together? Um, as we mentioned, we do, we are trying to really make this inclusive and global. Um, so this will really help us learn how to better broadcast um, events like this. Question two, in what sessions do you expect to be most interested in? Uh, we are just interested in knowing the topics of um, open science and reproducible research. <clears throat> and there are multiple choice. You can select all of them if you want. Emma, I'll let you decide when to show the results. Okay, here we go, let's see. All right, awesome. So it seems like a lot of people heard from a friend or a colleague. Um, that's wonderful, thank you. Um, data sharing, study design, this is awesome. Okay, so it seems like a lot of, there's a lot of interest in all of these topics. Um, reconstruction, image analysis, awesome. All right, so as for our social break, um, again, this is on the A10D platform. Um, you can log in anytime over the next few days, log in before, um, log in after the sessions, and then again, the 15 minute breaks during the sessions, you can log in. When you arrive, you'll arrive on the first floor, you'll see all of our um, sponsor booths. You can go ahead and check them out. If you walk along the wall with the sponsors, you'll hit um, a, a wall down here and this will have be the monitor and this will show re previously recorded talks from other sessions. So if you can't attend all the sessions because of time zones, um, you can come here as long as the speaker has given the right license for us to share um, their talks. If you go ahead and walk up the stairs. Oh, Francesco, did you wanna? Yeah, Laura, just uh, for non-Americans, uh, you will be landing on the ground floor, not the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair, the ground floor, all right. And then we walk up the stairs and we have a hallway of 15 posters. Please check them out. There's even videos. Um, it's some really great work that people have done. Um, and then you walk further and then you'll see some meeting tables and you can sit here and have a chat with a colleague or an old friend that maybe we haven't seen for a few years. Um, we also have a job board. So if you're interested in posting as well, either for an open position or as a job seeker, you can go ahead and do a pull request on our GitHub rep repository. It's all on our website. Check out the last link down here. Um, and then here we go. Um, so without a doubt, I think one of the highlights of the last year has really been meeting with um, the organizing committee. So thank you, Sanam, Emma, Maxime. Um, my Monday mornings are gonna be a little bit more lonely going forward. Um, We've also been really lucky to have some great advi advisors who have inspired us, um, Oslam, Edwin, and Stephen, um, especially Stephen, whose continuous support and involvement on Slack and Twitter has um, kept our spirits high during the planning. Um, he's always created a welcoming environment um, for us to exchange ideas. So thank you. Let me give a big thank you to ESMRMB um, for endorsing us and helping us out and to all of our sponsors um, as well, who have made this workshop accessible to all of our registration, <laughs> registrations. Uh, we also personally received um, donations from 30 people. Not all are listed here. Again, thank you very much. I'm almost at the end. Um, we want to acknowledge um, our wonderful speakers and moderators who took the leap and said yes for a workshop that didn't really exist and hadn't existed before. So again, thank you, um, we wouldn't be here. And then lastly, we wouldn't be here without you guys. Um, so thank you for joining us today, um, no, matter where in, um, no matter where in the stage of open science or reproducible uh, research you are, we hope that you're able to discover ways of doing research that can improve your work, um, boost your confidence in your results and increase your visibility within the scientific community. So let's do this together, let's go. Well, 
thank you, Laura. And uh, I see your voice is uh, <laughs> at the end of <laughs> its useful uh, life for today. Hopefully you will have more voice for tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, 